You would be hard-pressed to find a more beautiful venue for college football today than the Blue Ridge Mountains of North Carolina with its breathtaking beauty and radiant fall colors. But for the next three hours, the peace and tranquility will give way to college football. Meet the welcoming committee. The Appalachian State defense, second best against the rush in the SOCON. Ready to tangle with perennial power, Georgia Southern. The Eagles have won six national championships, and they're bidding for their seventh straight SOCON title. And flying high these days with three straight wins. But a major challenge awaits. Football Saturday continues from Western North Carolina. A spectacular day for college football as we shine the spotlight on the Southern Conference today. Number 10, Georgia Southern battling the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. And what a day it will be in the SOCON, our version of Separation Saturday. One loss separates the top five teams and the top six clubs are going head to head this weekend. Good afternoon, everybody. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer, great to have you with us. Georgia Southern has dominated the SOCON, having won six consecutive league championships. And, David, looked like they were going to be in trouble in September, losing back-to-back -back games, but they've righted the ship, having won three straight. And it seems that an injury turned their season around. It did, and it's been a hot football player in Trey Hunter that's taken over at the quarterback spot. Trey's come on and guided this team to over 700 yards of offense, and he's rushed for six touchdowns thrown for four. The reason Trey Hunter's on the field is because 2002 Player of the Year, Chaz Williams, had torn up a knee. He is now back from an arthroscopic surgery. He is available for this ball club. Meanwhile, Appalachian has gotten their season together. A big upset win at Furman last week has the Mountaineers back in the race. They rely on an outstanding defensive unit, and the leader of the pack is K.T. Stovall. K.T. Stovall. Jerry Moore, Coach Jerry Moore, told us the only guy on this field today that's beaten Georgia Southern is this man right here, K.T. Stovall. He's a fifth-year senior. He has 12 sacks for this football team, and they have 32 tackles for loss. The head coach at Georgia Southern is Mike Seawalk. In his second year as the head man, his ball club comes to Boone. Four wins and two defeats, and a 2-1 and one record inside the Southern Conference. The dean of coaches in this league is this man, Jerry Moore, the head coach at Appalachian. His ball club has not failed to make the playoffs since 1993, and it looked like this addition was on some shaky ground. But they've got a chance, Dave, to play themselves back into the race with a win today. We saw the standings, and this is definitely separation Saturday for the SOCON. All top six teams playing one another. This can be a classic here today. Eric Rockhold getting set to kick things off for Appalachian. Terry Kraft is the deep man for Georgia Southern. Appalachian State won the toss, deferred to the second half, so Georgia Southern will take the football, and we are ready for this big game. Georgia Southern and Appalachian, and great to have you with us here on Fox Sports Net. Kraft, five yards deep in his end zone, takes a knee. The quarterback of the Eagles is junior Trey Hunter. As Dave mentioned earlier, last week's SoCon Offensive Player of the Week, 312 yards in total offense and four touchdowns in the Western Carolina win. And the footnote to those statistics, it was just his second career start. He has been a huge catalyst for this offense. They had struggled a little bit. He's come in and done a great job for them. A quick toss to start things. And Georgia Southern getting some big yardage out to midfield. Kevin Anderson with the carry. The offensive line as we check our Carolina Ford dealers starting lineup. This old line, key to the nation's third best running attack, and you just saw a big gainer on first down. The best running back of the Southern Conference is number six, Jermaine Austin. He ranks fourth nationally at 134 yards per game. There is Austin. 807 yards to date. First and 10 after the pickup of 30 yards by Anderson. And again to the Appalachian 44 yard line. Let's check out the Mountaineers D. Second in the conference against the run. KT Stovall, the defensive player of the week last week in the SOCON. 
The linebacking crew is very solid. Sam Smalls will get the start. He missed last week with an injury at weak side linebacker. Corey Lynch, a ball bag that he's picked off two passes and recovered four fumbles. Second and short. And a quick toss to Kevin Davis. And he is shy of the first down. A penalty flag on the play as Smalls comes over to make the hit. Might have got the mass late there on that tackle. Kevin Davis has done such a good job running this football team. He averages 9.1 yards a carry. He's held up here, but I think Smalls got a little too much of the mask. So the penalty will give Georgia Southern the first down. It's interesting to note it as this offense has got cracked up for Georgia Southern. Face mask against the defense. Five-yard penalty. First down. This is a team that has been converting 39% of its third downs, but in first quarters this year, only 27%. So Mike Seawalk and the gang from Statesboro, Georgia, feeling good about this opening drive. First and 10 at the Mountaineer 37. Hunter back to pass. He's going deep. He's got a man wide open. And it is going to be a completed pass at the one-yard line as Teddy Kraft made the catch, a 36-yard gain. Then he lost the football after contacting the new turf here at Kid Brewer Stadium. This is the beauty of being able to run the football. When you run the football, now you get a little play fake, and all of a sudden your receiver slips behind coverage. And a good throw from Trey Hunter. Good catch. Better catch maybe than the throw as you see Teddy Kraft make a twisting catch and then try to lay out to get it to the end zone. And taking it into the end zone is Trey Hunter. And Georgia Southern marches 80 yards on the game's first drive to take the early lead. When you play on the road, this is an important opportunity to get the football first. If you do get it first, do something with it. Super drive by Georgia Southern to get the football down the field. 80-yard drive. Sean Holland is in to kick the PAT. And the Eagles of Georgia Southern take a 7-0 lead. Today's game is being brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas. By BB&T, you can tell we want your business. By Stedman Hawkins, keeping active people active. And by Food Lion, Food Lion, extra low prices. Welcome back to Appalachian State University. The visitors from Statesboro, Georgia with a 7-0 first quarter lead as they take the opening kickoff and drive it 80 yards in five plays to lead 7-0. And now the Eagles set to kick off. Derek Black, one of the deep men for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. He's averaging nearly 27 yards on kick returns, 12th in the country, a dangerous man. Devon Fultz is also back there at his own eight. The kick will come to Black at the two. Looking for a seam, using that great speed, and gets it out over the 30. A penalty flag at the 32-yard line. Quarterbacking the Mountaineers is sophomore Richie Williams and had the best game of his season, it seemed, last week, Dave, in that victory at Furman. Well, he just grew up throughout the game. It seemed like he got better as the game went along, and that's what allowed that team, along with the defense he played, allowed that team to win that football game at Furman last week. Holding. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Ed Rhodes is our referee today. Here are the numbers on Richie so far in his still young career at Appalachian, a 50% passer. Coming into this game at 54%. He's at 57 of 105 with three interceptions and four touchdown passes. The penalty moves Appalachian back to the 15. That's where they start things. And a play fake right out of the shoot. The pass too long intended for Sterling Hayward. Up front, let's check Appalachian. Our Carolina Ford dealers starting lineups for the Mountaineers. Two true freshmen at the guards, Ricky Epps and Matt Eisenhower. And a true freshman, Alan Atwater, is the leading rusher on this ball club. Hayward 
is indeed a sterling receiver. He leads the ball club with 23 catches. There's Atwater, who had a huge week two weeks ago, 190 yards against East Tennessee. Second and 10 from the 15. Atwater has it, and the Eagle defense is right there to get him. Let's take a look at that Georgia Southern defensive front. They are last in the circle allowing 221 yards per game passing. Deshaun Jude will start today at defensive end. At middle linebacker, the leading tackler is Derek Butler. And at left corner, Aaron Whitaker has broken up seven passes in six games. Third down. There's Butler, the middleman in that linebacking core for Georgia Southern. Third down and nine for Appalachian. Williams out of the gun. Looking, running, throwing, and it is incomplete up near the 25-yard line. The intended receiver. Coming up out of the back is Leach, and that's incomplete. Now Appalachian, three and out. Early momentum to the Eagles. Yeah, early momentum to the Eagles. They played well on defense there. Uh, the corner, Aaron Whitaker, broke up the first pass play. Got, the, got in the receiver's way, broke up the timing on the throw, and, and they were scrambling from second and 10 to third and 10. Nate McKinney, an outstanding punter, looking to boom one here, and he does just that. Kraft backpedals to his 30. And a five-yard return. Well, McKinney with a tremendous punt, 53 yards, 10-yard return. We got a chance to see a little bit of McKinney last week against Furman, and he picks right up where he left off last week. Had a tremendous week. He's averaging about 43 yards a kick, which is second in the SOCON. But his ability to change field position, they were back, uh, Vapalachian was backed up significantly there. Now he kicks it back out where his defense has some room to work. From the 40-yard line, first down and 10. <laughs> Trey Hunter, at quarterback, and the give to the fullback, Jermaine Austin. And Austin spins his way to the 48-yard line. Appalachian signals that they have it, but no, the officials say that Austin was down. Second down coming for Georgia Southern. Well, that's what this Appalachian defense does so well. They get after the passer, they get into your backfield, and they create turnovers. Austin, just the, the simple ride, dive, dive handoff to the fullback, and he's their featured running back. See if that ball, ooh, the ball did come out a little bit early. Ball came out early. So uh, Georgia Southern catches an early break. Referees were not able to see that play. But what's so impressive about Georgia Southern's offense is they average 7.1 yards on first down. That's 39 play. They've had 39 plays on first, or 181 plays on first down, 7.1 yard average. Hunter gives Austin, crawls over the 50 and into Appalachian territory at the 47. That will be a first down for the Eagles, their fourth of the opening quarter. We've already seen that in this game, the long run to start the game, the 30-yard run, and then the long completion uh, to Teddy Kraft that set up the first touchdown. Both those plays were on first down, so if you're going to shut down Georgia Southern's offense, it has to be on first down. This is a ball club that's averaging just under 28 points per game. Hunter on the option, takes it to the 39. Two yards shy of another first down. This Eagles team is averaging 325 yards a game on the ground. Third best in one double-A football. When you talk about converting first downs, when they get when they get in regular situations, they're 38 percent. When you get in one to five yard situations, they jump up to 62 percent converting third downs. Nice decision. And the toss giving it to Kevin Anderson to the 36 and a first down. Trey Hunter showing uh, some maturity beyond his years on that option because Appalachian is a smash mouth in the trenches, hit you hard. Defensive front and great poise on this option play. Well, the offense has been run to perfection so far. They've stayed in great yardage situations. This was a second and two. He was able to pitch, pitch it out and get the first down to Anderson. But that's what that Appalachian State defense does is create havoc. They have not been able to do that here in the first, first five minutes of the game. Hunter wants to pass. He's throwing deep down the sideline. It's incomplete. 
Eric Irby is the intended receiver. Good coverage by Black there. They had the play fake. Similar play that we saw in the first drive that Kraft caught down the right sideline. This time Black stays at home, stays the receiver, and there's no throw. We, you were talking about Trey Hunter maybe growing up, defying his years a little bit. Credit him there, throwing the ball deep enough to where only his guy could get it. If he couldn't, it's out of bounds. They regroup and set it back up at third down. They don't turn the football over. Here's the Appalachian defensive statistics. Ball Hawks indeed. That's been an area of concern for Georgia Southern. Their takeaway margin. Hunter. To the 32 yard line. Play play that time by Blaylock and Leon Moore. Moore penetrates right away and makes Trey Hunter turn up inside where the rest of the Appalachian State defense is there. Blaylock and the crew are able to make the play, but Lee Moore pressured the play to start it, and Blaylock finished it off. Leon out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, played at Carver High School. Hunter on the back of one of his linemen. Albert Turner, the left tackle, and the play is shy. It's going to be fourth at about five. The linebacker play for the Appalachian State defense. We talked about how aggressive they are. Pretty good blocking up front by the Georgia Southern offensive line. But again, KT Stovall, 93. These two defensive ends, Moore and Stovall, do a great job of filtering the plays back to the linebackers and allowing those guys to make the plays. Fourth and four. Eagles looking to keep the drive alive. And a whistle. Play clock shows zero. Delay a game against the offense. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. So that will force a punt. Coach Seawalk probably had Trey Hunter trying to change count, maybe a hard count there, draw Appalachian offside. We're not able to do that. They realize how aggressive this Appalachian State front four is. Maybe draw them offsides and get the first down a cheap way. Now they'll punt the football. Devon Folks. Waiting at his own 10. Excellent punt returner. And the fair catch made by Devon at the 12-yard line. A timeout at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. 9-18 of the first, 7-0 Georgia State. 7-0 Georgia Southern leads Appalachian State here in the first quarter. This week, a Fox NFL doubleheader beginning with the Saints and Falcons as both teams look to get back on track. Then the Buccaneers and 49ers go head-to-head. -head. Coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on Fox. The biggest stories are in the NFC. And the NFC is on Fox. Bob Rath and Dave Archer with you in the mountains this Saturday afternoon. Couldn't be better weather-wise for this great game of college football. The Mountaineers looking to stay in this race. They've spotted at Georgia Southern seven early points. The third time that the Eagles this year have taken the opening drive and scored. Meanwhile, Appalachia continues to have first quarter difficulties. They've been outscored big time, and they have allowed the opposition to score on the opponent's first drive four times in seven games. The toss to Allen Atwater. Good hard running over the 15 to the 17. It's a wide toss play to Allen Atwater. You had mentioned he had 190 yards two weeks ago. Last week against Furman, somewhere in the 60, 70 yard range. But this is just a good job. Good lead block by the fullback. Jones gets a super block, and boy, he's he does a good job. Whenever you got a good tailback that runs the football as well as Allen Atwater's running the ball, you've got a fullback laying some wood in front of him. Southern Nash High School, Eastern North Carolina. Out of the eye, Atwater. Nowhere to go this time. Only to the 15. It's going to be a loss of two. Big number 70, Eric McIntyre. Estero, Florida, Jr. Credited with the first hit. When you play a football team that has a couple of weapons, and I'm talking about Alan Atwater and Richie Williams, the quarterback, you, as a defense, you concentrate on maybe taking one of those weapons away. I think they would like to take away Alan Atwater and see if Richie Williams can beat their defense. 
Appalachians run five plays. They've got five yards in this first quarter. Third down and seven. Williams will keep it and go 30, 35. Well, there's an answer, Dave. He made the play. On cue. 27-yard pickup. Richie does a good job of running the option play. He's going to ride the fullback and read. He realizes the end crashes, so he's going to take it around the end. Now there's no reason to pitch. Nice priest. Look at Devon Folks trying to get a block out in front. He extends the drive. Good run for the sophomore quarterback. Again, you see the end crash, so there's nobody out there for him to option off of. Now he gets up the field. Devon Folks, the outside receiver, trying to get a little block for him, allowed him to get another five yards. That's the first first down for the Mountaineers. Atwater to the outside. Penalty flag. Atwater out of bounds to Georgia Southern 45. And the penalty flag. One step forward and two back for Jerry Moore's Mountaineers. Jerry's team does a good job of staying balanced. They run and throw the football Holding. pretty well. I guess the offense. 10 yards down to the five of the foul. Repeat first down. James Burchett, the outside linebacker there, number 51. Looks like he got wrapped up. And I was talking about the fullbacks. That's Corey Jones trying to get a block for his freshman tailback and he ended up getting a little too much of the defender and uh, the guys in the, red, in the black stripe saw him. First and 16. Williams and out of bounds. And Dave, he had plenty of room to run had he so chosen. They had it blocked very well and about 15, 20 yards of green ersatz grass in front of him. Well, I liked his decision, though, Bob. He was a sprint out to the wide side of the field. He had he had folks in the slot. Uh, folks was open, and uh, he had a chance down the. Actually, folks was down the sideline. He had another receiver in the slot, and folks had run by the defender. Uh, it looked like uh, Aaron Whitaker, the outside defender, the corner, had let folks run on by. He actually had a chance for a touchdown there and just made a poor throw. Little indecision in the huddle and have to burn a timeout. And we'll take it with them. 7 I'm 16. Out. First State. quarter. First Eagles step. 7. Mountaineers nothing on Fox Sports Net. Back at Kid Brewer Stadium, 7 0. Georgia Southern College football recruiting fans, be sure to check out Countdown to Sonic Day, Wednesdays at 6 30. It's the year of the linebacker in the South. And this week we'll take a look at one of the best. West Monroe, Louisiana's Luke Sanders. Plus the latest on commitments, recruiting visits, and more. Countdown to Sonic Day Wednesdays at 6.30 Eastern right here on Fox Sports Net. Big crowd, beautiful day. The Mountaineers and Georgia Southern. All right, you got a second and 15 situation here. So if I'm Richie Williams, my thought process is I'm going to try to get half of this yardage here. If I get to throw the football, I'd like to pick up half. Obviously, if you've got a big shot down the field, you take it. But you'd like to get half of it, get yourself in a third down and seven, six, seven situation to try to convert on third down. Richie hit as he throws. Incomplete. And Hayward pointing that he was interfered with, but no flag. Well, that's what those linebackers do in there. Derek, Derek Butler gets a little gets a little handle on, on Hayward as he's coming over the middle. Hayward's in the slot. Now Butler's job is to look for a crosser. See him swivel his head looking for the crosser. Hayward's the crosser. See, that's that's pass interference, folks. Ball was in the air and the contact was further than five yards down the field. That's pass interference. Again, Georgia Southern gets away with one. They lost the fumble on the last drive and now get away with a pass interference. Third and long, and Williams dumps it to Adwater. And a 
punt coming for the Mountaineer. Now, people will get on Richie Williams for making that decision. He looked down the field. He didn't like what he saw. He did not want to turn the football over. He's got a great punter. He dropped the ball off to Atwater, see if Atwater could make a play. He couldn't. Now they're in a manageable situation here, the punting. They're going to be able to change the field position with their punter. He's a weapon for this club. I think that's Richie Williams playing smart. Craft is deep. As Nate McKinney gets set to boom one here. This kid's got a good leg. Craft inside the 10, back to the 5. He eludes one tackler. Can't elude the other. And driven down at the seven. Well, and there's exactly what Richie Williams was hoping would happen. His punter pins him inside the 10-yard line. Now you've got this aggressive defense that does such a great job turning the football over. Is on the field, and Georgia Southern is backed up. First and 10 inches. 51-yard punt and a two-yard return. Bad decision to field the ball inside his 10-yard line. Now Kraft is going to try to make a great job and not block in there by the Georgia Southern player. Get the clip, but now just great coverage. And uh, you get a bunch of black jerseys in on that play. First and 10, Eagles at the 7. Austin thrown down at the 13. Jermaine, the sophomore from Darien, Georgia, was a tremendous wrestler in high school, unbeaten senior year at McIntosh County High, 25-0. And overall as a wrestler, 161 wins and only 16 defeats. He's got that low center of gravity. It's really hard to get his arm, get your arms around him. This time, Austin met and dropped by Omar Byram. Number 95. Kid Brewer Stadium. Boone, North Carolina, Georgia Southern. Number 10 in 1AA this week. Against their old rivals, the Mountaineers of Appalachian State. Bob Rathbun, Dave Archer. Pleasure to have you with us. And a good one brewing here in the hills. It's going to be third down and three. Coming around on the toss is Anderson. Appalachian right there. They were burned early, Dave, but not that time. Just a good play on the edge. Deion Stokes, or I'm sorry, Trailer. Daniel Trailer came up and made a play. Had the wrong, no wrong jersey. Daniel Player comes up and makes a great play. He plays off the block. He's initially blocked. 21 Trailer. Watch, he's hooked, but he gets around the defender and makes the play, and the rest of the team is able to rally. Derek Black is also there. Folks is waiting. Folks is going to let it bounce. It gets a Mountaineer bounce, rolling, and touched at the 46 of Georgia Southern. So they won that field position well, battle. And there you see the change of possession, and fans will look back and say, well, why did he throw the ball underneath? You see about three minutes later now, all of a sudden, Appalachian State doesn't have the ball on their 40-yard line. They've got it on the Georgia Southern 46-yard line. 14 yards of field position change simply because Richie Williams decided not to force the football downfield to pound on his punter to make the change. 4-26. The time remaining in the opening quarter, 7-0 in favor of the visitors. But now Appalachian with its best field position of the day. Their previous two drives started at their own 15 and their own 12. Richie Williams gives. Atwater turns the corner. First down, Mountaineers at the 29. Burchett and Muhammad on the tackle, but not before Atwater gains 16. This kid's really going to be something. His feel to run the football. Watch him slide. He heads up. Now there's nothing there. He just kind of slides to the outside. Yeah, he's getting some good blocking, but it's the vision of the running back, being able to feel where the hole is, press and slide. He does a great job of that. Just feels his outside crease and goes to it. Williams. Oh, he opted it. Nobody was there. Atwater thought that Williams is going to just hang on to it. And now they're trying to get their communication together. Well, the, 
the pitch pitch relationship broke down on this play. Richie Williams gets a little too close to the sideline. At this point right here, he's either he's got to pitch it well before this, because once you get to the numbers, your running back's pitch relationship, and I mean the pitch relationship is is about four yards between the quarterback and the, and the running back. Once you get to the numbers, the running back's saying, hey, you're going to keep it at this point. I've got no room over here. Richie should have kept that football. Andrew Stamey, the tight end lines up to the left. Toss to Atwater. Needs about three more for the first. Derek Butler, the tackle. Yeah, great pursuit by Derek Butler. He's the guy that leads his defense, and he's a sideline to sideline player. He made this play for no gain. Another good block at the point by Corey Jones, the fullback. And when Atwater turned it up, number 43 Butler was right there. Check it on the yards to gain. It is third and let's call it 10. They've got to get to about the 20 yard line. Third down conversions. Appalachian one of three. Williams has time. Zips it in traffic and it's complete to Sterling Hayward. Down to the 13. My goodness, he threw that one between four defenders. <laughs> when you zip, when you said zip it, that's exactly what he did. This is a cover two, which is a kind of an umbrella coverage. Two deep safeties, two corners, and they're all sinking because they realize it's third and ten. But a good job of Hayward of getting in the hole, and then just a I talk about there was a blue streak <laughs> behind that ball. Boy, he put it on him. Hayward has made a catch now in 31 consecutive games for the Mountaineers. None finer than that one. Comes into the game averaging 13 or 16.3 yards of play, and so he's he's been their big play guy from the receiver standpoint. 16-yard gain. Sean Jude uh, limping off the field. Looked like he went off under his own power. He should be back. He's been playing with a sore left foot, and that seems to be bothering him again. So Appalachian has it first at 10. Shaheen Solomon comes in at defensive end to take Jude's spot. Williams with the eye behind him on first down. The give is to the fullback, Stuart Adams. Stuart Adams on the carry. Every now and then they'll give that fullback a crumb. And that's all it is. He'll give the fullback <laughs> ball a couple times. And what you do is you give him a little crumb, feed him a little bit so then he can go out and hit those guys on the edge for you. Because these two fullbacks, uh, uh, Stuart Adams, who's leaving the football game now, and I'm sure he's replaced by Corey, uh, Corey Adams. Corey Jones. Uh, or Corey, I'm sorry, Corey Jones. Those two guys really get after people when they're blocking the foot, blocking for their backs. Williams. Oh, he found a great hole. What a run down to the three. Oh, that was pretty nifty right there, Mr. It, Archer. It really was, and it was all him. He realized he had no pitch because Aaron Whitaker did such a great job of taking away the pitch to the outside. Richie's going to ride the fullback, and then he turns it back up inside right there at the end. That was just him finding that little crease in there. See, there's no pitch. Now he's got to find somewhere to go, and that's just pure athleticism that gets him the five yards on that play. Third and one at the four-yard line. Williams going for the first down. Richie Williams on the carry. Clock stops with 115 as the officials check on the spot here. Well, this is just a crap shoot in the Depends on where the referee comes in and marks from. It didn't look like he got a real good spot. No, I don't believe he did. And he's going to be short. Short by about the length of the football, it seems. Let's see as they stretch him out. That much. 
So fourth down. Well, I think Coach Jerry Moore will probably go here, and you'll probably see 34 handling the football. Allen Atwater. Fourth down. Atwater the tailback. Corey Jones the fullback behind Williams. On the option, Williams takes it. He's got the first down at the two, but shy of the goal line. Yeah, but it's a good decision, Bob, because if he pitches the football, now Georgia Southern has a chance to make the play and keep him short. All Ricky Williams was looking for was a little crease. Once he found that, he realized he didn't need to get in the end zone. He just needed that yard to extend the drive. Now they have four shots to punch it in. It's an option play to this side coming right at you. Lead option, Jones out in front blocking. He finds that little hole. He says, now I got the first down. And now I got another tough, but now I got four downs to put it in. It's a good, he's done a good job in this series of taking care of the ball and taking, taking runs where he had them. Atwater. Second down. Now a little, little bit of a problem on the handoff, which I think stunned Atwater's ability to hit it in behind Jones, the fullback. And, uh, it kind of delayed him a little bit and allowed Georgia Southern to get off their blocks and make the tackle. Southern real stout in the middle the of the defensive goal. line. Eric Hadley, Eric McIntyre, those guys in the middle there did a good job of shutting it down here at the end of the first quarter. As the final seconds tick away. Southern Conference on Fox Sports Net today. Six-time defending champion, Georgia Southern Eagles. Coming to Kid Brewer Stadium and battling Jerry Moore's Mountaineers of Appalachian at the end of one. Georgia Southern seven, Appalachian State nothing. Second quarter straight ahead on Fox Sports Net. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. And we are in Western North Carolina. What a beautiful day as Appalachian hosts Georgia Southern. Well, we've mourned the passing of one of the Tar Heel State's greatest athletes ever. Charlie Choo Choo Justice passed away yesterday at the age of 79. And you'll note at the bottom of your screen, he is one of four in Southern Conference history to be first team all conference all four years of his playing. And you're saying, well, Bob, you said University of North Carolina. Well, back in the 40s, the University of North Carolina was in the Southern Conference. This conference it's been around since the 20s, gave birth to the ACC, to the SEC, and the Tar Heels, when Choo Choo was around, played in the Southern Conference. We send our sympathies to his family. One of the all-time greats. Atwater stacked up on the right side. It is going to be a third down and goal coming. Once again, big Eric Hadley in the middle, part of that defensive front that just is not allowing things to get through the middle and when Hadley's playing well and will and when McIntyre's playing well this guy right here can make the plays that's middle linebacker Derek Butler and you see him stand up the back that was Jackson Sean Jackson with the carry that time so things are getting interesting here third down and goal this is the 12th play of the drive coming up probably see him on the edge here now they've not been able to get through the middle now he's gonna have to got out of the huddle late Got a late call, so they have to burn a timeout. Time Second out. quarter, 14-12, remaining 7-0 Eagles. Back to Kit Brewer after this. 7-0 Georgia Southern this week on Fox NFL Sunday's pregame show. Howard Long goes to New York to find out what's wrong with the Giants and what needs to be done to get them back on track. And you'll never guess what, uh, what Pam Oliver has on, on the scoop. It's the Ford 150 Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at 12 noon Eastern on Sunday, and it's only on Fox. A 7-0 lead for the visitors from Georgia Southern, and you're thinking, Dave Archer, get to the outside. Yeah, I th this, the option play's been good to him. I think you'll see Richie Williams and Atwater on the edge trying to make a play. Well, what a drive. 
Over five minutes they've held the football here. This is one it would take it out of the offense if they don't get in. They've been out on the field so long, come away with just maybe three. Williams, touchdown. They made it look easy. You just had to figure they're going to go back to the option. It'd been so good for him. And again, you can't say enough about what Corey Jones is doing at the fullback slot. He gets a good block that allows Richie Williams to turn up inside and make make the touchdown for Appalachian State. Watch the fullback 43. Let's see if he gets a block. Right there on Burchett. Right in behind goes the quarterback. And that's what happens. You got a fullback that blocks the way Corey Jones does. There's going to be a lot of room to run. The PAT is good. Brock Hold with the kick. He's been perfect this year. Now 12 of 12. And this game is tied. Richie Williams takes it in from two yards out. 7 7 and Boone. And a reminder, friends, that Rusty Wallace has been through it all in his illustrious career, overcoming stereotypes, a strained personal life, and a feud with NASCAR's Golden Boy. Beyond the Glory takes you inside the triumphant road of a racing legend, Rusty Wallace, on Beyond the Glory Sunday at 9, right here on Fox Sports Net. Ready for the Appalachian kickoff in a brand new game, 7 7 with 14 08. Remaining in this second quarter. Kind of what we saw last week, Bob, with Appalachian State kind of weathering the storm in the first quarter against Furman and then taking control of the game. Here they weather the storm in that first drive, just an overwhelming drive by Georgia Southern. They come back and tie the football game. Teddy grabbed the deep man. Rock hold to kick it away for Appalachian. I want to ask you a couple of things about the field and the sunshine and shadows situation here, Dave, when we get a chance. Here comes the kick and craft into the end zone. He's going to run it out. To the 16. Oh, great coverage. First, let me ask you about the turf. It's brand new here this season at Kid Brewer Stadium and a delight to play on. It really is. It, a lot of teams have gone to it. You see a lot of the Division I teams, a lot of pro teams are going to it. This is what the Atlanta Falcons play on at the Georgia Dome. It's called field turf, and it's, it's the closest simulation to natural grass that you can get. Uh, a little bit of combination of rubber with longer leafed grass on the field. Very nice, soft feel to it. And Jerry Moore was telling us yesterday they have cut their injuries way down this season because of it. Georgia Southern with the football and a big run out to nearly midfield Jermaine Austin with the carry and they'll mark him down at the 49 32 yard gain. Well, that's just the fullback up the middle and this is the engine that drives Georgia Southern's offense Jermaine Austin look at he's just a bowling ball knocking people down bouncing off people he averaged 134 yards a game that leads the Southern Conference and is sixth in the country in rushing. And this is why he gets so many yards after he's touched. Third play for Georgia Southern this half. 30 yards or more inside handoff. And another big game. Down to the 28-yard line. Brandon Andrews, the ball carrier this time. And Georgia Southern getting that bone cranked up. And Brandon Andrews is built just like Jermaine Austin, 5'9", 204. Both men, sophomores, and both have that real low center of gravity. Great big legs. They stay low. They keep their weight over their feet. And they always fall forward. Andrews from Swainsboro. Hunter. And the handoff. This time, Andrews taking it over the 25 to the 22. Dave, the other Andrews. question I wanted to ask you about, the time of day. We're approaching 5 o'clock uh, Eastern time this Saturday afternoon. Shadows a big factor. What's that like for the team? The shadows aren't as big a problem as the sunshine as it starts to get low. And if you're throwing footballs where the sun is back in your receiver's eyes, that becomes a problem. And it can become a problem for defensive back also. Austin. To the 20. And shy of the first down. It will be third and Oh, let's say a yard and a half as Jason Hunter was the first man to get to him. Well, Georgia Southern's offense obviously made some adjustments on, uh, on the sideline because they now have the fullback. They didn't have the fullback in the last two drives. They now have the fullback and are featuring it in this drive. Uh, 
Hunter. First down at the 15. The only clubs with more rushing yards per game than Georgia Southern is Nickel State and the University of Rhode Island. You see they piled up 140 on the ground here in the first half. The bulk of that in this drive right here. Austin wrapped up to the 12. Some pretty tough yards in there for Jermaine Austin. Well, they can change. Coach, Coach Seawalk does such a good job of changing the blocking assignments up front for their front, for their offensive line. He'll change how they want to attack. They'll let a defender go, and that's who they'll option. They'll change it from a defensive tackle to a defensive end. They'll even change it to a linebacker. They'll loop and leave a lineman unblocked. Go block the linebacker. So he does a good job of changing blocking assignments. Hunter to the nine. Coming up that time, Jason Hunter for Appalachian. Defensive end. Second quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven. Two big gainers, one by Austin, one by Andrews. And now Georgia Southern has it third down. We'll call it five. Just inside the 10-yard line. Davis, the motion man, gets it on the pitch. Can he get to the outside? Yes. Can he get to the end zone? Yes. And Georgia Southern has six. Kevin Davis with his second rushing touchdown of the season. And the Eagles go in front 13-7. Well, it's a little option play. They change the look. They motion Davis back inside. He becomes the pitch back. There's the pitch. And just a dive by Jarrell Carter. He can't get there. Davis is kind of their big play guy. He averages 9.3 yards a carry. Actually, one of their top receivers, too. So he's a guy that has the ability to break one open. That was a nice play there. That turned out to be a nine-yard rush. And the kick by Sean Holland is good. Kevin Davis, Jr. from Folkston, Georgia, with the touchdown. And the Eagles go back in front, 14-7 at Boone. Kevin Davis, nine-yard touchdown run, capping an 84-yard eight-play drive for Georgia Southern. And all 84 yards on that drive on the ground. That's the second 80-yard drive we've had today from Georgia Southern, and it's the sixth of the season. They've driven for 24 touchdowns this year, and 14 of them have been 60-plus yards, so they can go the long way when they can take care of the football. That's the key to Georgia Southern's offense. If they don't put the football on the ground, they're very difficult to stop. Jonathan Dudley kicks it away. Derek Black at the three. Returns to the 25. No Appalachian going back to work. First down at their own 24-yard line. Last week, Appalachian went on the road and knocked off the number five team in the country, Furman. They have number 10, Georgia Southern, today. And then on the 25th of October, it's back to Spartanburg to take on Wofford. So this is a very challenging portion of the Mountaineers schedule, but is the Mountaineer folks were telling us yesterday, Dave, every week's a playoff week for them. Williams swallowed up and thrown down by Eric Hadley. Well, Hadley stepped up his play. He did a good job in the goal line on the last series of downs for Georgia Southern's defense to stop that inside run. Here he's going to take the quarterback. Hadley's going to play that defensive tackle slot and just run right through the freshman Epps and make the play on the quarterback. You also got to credit the other side of the defense for getting some penetration. Hadley leads the team and tackles for losses with five. It's another one to his credit here. Second and 12. Williams near side, folks with the grab and out of bounds at the 28. Well, 
Devon Folks is just outside, just a three-step drop. Folks has got the corner playing off. Catches it now back down to a third and five, third and six situation. And again, this brings everything back into play. You have a draw play available. You have the screen. You have the short passing game. That completion allowed the rest of the offense to come back into play. Mountaineers three of six on third down conversions. Williams is ready. Wants to pass. Dancing around. Now has to run it. And gets the first down at the 36. This is what makes this young man so valuable, the second leading rusher on the ball club. Well, he does a good job, and this is the first pass play I've seen him read in pro on the wrong way. He's got Sean Jackson at the bottom of the screen open, but he realizes he got a little bit of pressure, and he says, okay, I'm going to get the first down on my own, and does a good job of getting there. But he had his back, Jackson, in the flat open. That's the first one I've seen him miss. He's played really well to this point. On the toss, Jackson. Penalty flag. Jackson driven back as he gets to the 42 yard line. Derek Butler made that last tackle for Georgia Southern. Let's check the flag. And we'll back the Mountaineers up. So they got a little start. The guy that's been extremely active in the middle for Georgia Southern has been Butler, Derek Butler, the middle linebacker. Watch him play off the block and just come up and get in with the rest of the guys on the tackle. But he does a good job of sealing it off. So now the back has to turn back inside. Enough men on the line of scrimmage. Five yard penalty. Decline. Second down. So the Eagles will take the play instead. Second and ten. Uh, correction, second and eight, they're saying now. As they adjust the sticks on the far side, Williams up and under center. He's got Atwater in the eye behind him at tail. Slot left, inside handoff to Stuart Adams. Nothing doing. Once again, that GSU defense led by Victor Cabral. Southern Conference football on Fox Sports Net today from Kid Brewer Stadium here in Boone, North Carolina. 8-12 and counting here in period two, 14-7. The Eagles on top. Appalachian faced with a third and eight. The Mountaineers four of seven on third down conversions. Play clock. They get it off in time. Williams. To the 41. It's good coverage by Georgia Southern's defense. They went to a zone, dropped seven into coverage. That time, Appalachian State had three receivers in the package, and so seven versus three, obviously tough to find any holes to get the football to, or to anybody to get the football to, and, and Richie decides to take off. Again, putting it in his punter's hands, hoping he can pin Georgia Southern's offense. Nate McKinnon. On the punt. Perhaps going to watch this one rocket all the way to the end zone. 59 yard punt, but they lose 20, of course, on the touchback. 7.35 remaining in the period. This week's TIAA Craft Student Athlete of the Week is Brady Anderson. Brady, Brandy rather, is a member of the Western Carolina women's golf team, holds a perfect 4.0 GPA, and is on the Dean's list. She was named to the SOCON Academic All-Conference team last spring and hails from Orlando, Florida. For more information on the TIAA Craft Academic Awards program, go to SOCONsports.com. Georgia Southern after the punt has it first down at 10 from the 20. And They'll stick it on the ground to their main man, Jermaine Austin. Again, Georgia Southern's ability to get that positive yardage on first down, that's what this whole offense is predicated on, and Jermaine Austin is a main key to that part of the offense. They average, we talked about 7.1 yards a carry on first down. Austin having a, another outstanding half. Hunter. On the keeper, first down and then some, up to the 36. Jerry Moore was telling us yesterday, Dave, about 
what he's been preaching to his defenders all week long, and that is to not get frustrated, stay patient, stay with the plan, which is responsibility on, these, on the option. Yeah, and the option, if you break down and don't stay with your assignment, then things are really going to break down for you. And that means somebody's got to take the fullback, somebody's got the quarterback, and somebody's got the pitch man. If somebody gets frustrated and says, hey, I'm going to take the quarterback this time, then the next thing you know, you've got a Georgia Southern defender running down the field. Hunter hit as he throws, and this one is going to be intercepted. At the 43-yard line, Jeremy Wiggins with the pickoff. And that is his first interception this season. Wiggins with great coverage. But Daniel Trailer lays a lick on Trey Hunter at the end of this play. Hunter's going to ride it. Now here's the, here's the chance for the big play. But watch, you see Trailer come in and hit the big hit. Just a good job of Wiggins on Davis. The coverage, Wiggins right there with Davis. And a super catch. It's a great catch. At the Appalachian 43-yard line. Wiggins is a young man from Georgia. He's from Macon and was recruited by Georgia State, uh, Southern rather, as a running back. So he comes up with the interception here. Pass to the outside, and it is Folks over the 45 to the 47-yard line. Let's go back to the interception. We've got some that don't believe he may have caught this football. Let's see if Wiggins is able to hang on. No, it hit the ground. And so the breaks are what, 2-1 in favor of, <laughs> yeah. favor of Georgia Southern? Right there. Looked like the ball slipped out of there and got out of there. Tom Hewitt, our producer downstairs, saw that one. He doesn't nice job, miss Tom. a thing. The eagle eye. <laughs> Second and seven. Atwater. Penalty flag. DeBron Jefferson, the tackle. By the speed of Georgia Southern's defense, they really flow to the football so well. If they're not blocked, you're in trouble. Looks like they're going to get Hayward again on the edge for a hold. Hayward trying to block the corner on the option game. And I think they're going to get number six for the hold. Holding against the offense. Ten yard penalty for the end of the run. Repeat second down. Got the option play to the wide side of the field. Got the pitch outside, number six. There's Hayward right there. Got hold of the corner. And credit Aaron Whitaker. Aaron Whitaker fought through the block and actually got in on the tackle, even though he was being held by Hayward. Fourth penalty against Appalachian. Georgia Southern suffered many penalties this season, but today just one flag against them. Williams now out of the gun. Plenty of green grass, but he's going to hoist it, and it is incomplete at the 25-yard line. Hayward was the intended receiver, had it for an instant, then it bounced off McBride, and incomplete. Well, James, James Young, the free safety, is going to come from the middle of the field and get his hands on it right there, and then it goes off of Hayward <laughs> into into and another folks, defense, into folks into nearly folks caught it. Almost ended up with it. <laughs> wow. Everybody's getting into the act. 5-18 before halftime. 14-7. Georgia Southern leading. Williams now 4 of 9 for 31 yards. He's faced with a third and 15. Bridging. Cranking. Throwing over the middle. Complete to Folks. Breaks a tackle. 45-40. And out of bounds at the 35-yard line, first down for Appalachian. This is a dangerous play, but Richie Williams gets away with, away with it because Folks is such a smart player. Folks is the inside receiver in the slot, and he's going to curl inside. Georgia Southern's defenders run past him. Folks comes behind the coverage and then breaks a tackle right at the first down marker and got the first down. Lewis Barr was the man who had him around the ankle. There's the throw back against the grain, and normally that'll hurt you. But he broke the tackle and got the first down. Nose of the football just shy of the 35. 
Mountaineers looking, throwing Williams to the near side, and it is to Turner. He's got it to the 25 and wrestled out of bounds to the 23. Brandon Turner makes the grab. Muhammad the tackle. And Turner finished the play, too. He made the catch and finished the run. Got the first down. Well, this is just a little swing to your slot receiver. Hope you get a block from your other outside receiver. Now watch him finish this play. A little want to in number 14 right there. First and 10, Appalachian at the Georgia Southern 23. Williams faking the play action, now throwing, and it's complete over the middle to the fullback, Stewart Adams, touchdown. Great play call. A great play call, exactly right. Play fake to the middle, fullback's gonna slip right by Carter, I'm sorry, Butler, and Adam just makes the catch and the big fellas backs it into the end zone. I mean, that's like backing an 18 wheeler up right there. <laughs> I mean, he can't turn this thing around. He's just going to back her into the end zone. <laughs> <laughs> and the kick by Rockhold to tie it with 430 remaining in the second quarter. Sophomore Stuart Adams from Lornburg, North Carolina with his flashers on backs it into the end zone. <laughs> The first career reception for Stuart Adams is a touchdown. How about that? None better than that. You get in the end zone on your first catch. Now you got to score every time. But it's just a play action fake, and Derek Butler caught, got caught inside on the play fake, and then he's got the back down the middle. Six plays, 57 yards. It's interesting they caught him with that play, because when you go back to film study and, and uh, they ran this play last week against Furman, and Adams dropped the football and was going to score on that play. So when you talk about film study, Georgia Southern saw that play on film last week, and yet they didn't respond to it when it was shown to them again. All right, we are ready. Eric Rock holds kick. And Teddy Kraft is the deep man for Georgia Southern. We'll keep an eye on Trey Hunter, the quarterback for the Eagles, on that interception. He was hit hard and suffered an ankle injury. Let's see if he comes out. On the return out to the 34-yard line is Carl Kearney. He's been playing with a bum ankle, but he makes the return here, and that's where Georgia Southern sets up. He's in there. And Hunter is the quarterback. Took a big lick on the interception from Trailer. Right at the end of the play, Trailer got a good lick on him, but Trey Hunter now how has a hold of this this quarterback position. He knows Chaz Williams is standing over the sideline. He doesn't want to give it up. He wants to stay in the football game. Some confusion, some movement, and flies. Well, Hunter wanted to change the play. He saw a defense that he wanted to get to something. He saw the back start. Anderson started in motion, and then when Hunter started to change the play, he moved back, but one of his offensive linemen jumped. Part of the snap, false start. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Number 10 is Chaz Williams, the junior, who suffered the knee injury three weeks ago. His right knee was scoped and hasn't played since. He's an electrifying player. Though. Had shoulder surgery last year in the offseason. Austin to the 35, 36-yard line, maybe a... Looked like a possible face mask. Williams was just fabulous last season. 27 rushing touchdowns. Uh, and just a spectacular year. When you put, uh, you know, 36 touchdowns on the board, whether you're running or throwing the football, you're putting, you're, you know, you're, you're giving your team a chance to win. He struggled this year, and some of it's because of the injuries. Only averaging 2.9 yards a carry coming into today's game. Dave Archer luck numbers at quarterback. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could run like that. Hunter. Close to the first down. Looks like he's got it at the 45. Coach Seawalk talked about how tough 
the kid that's playing quarterback right now is Trey Hunter. He, he's done a really good job coming in these last three games. We talked about the 750 yards of offense he's generated. He, you know, Seawalk really loves the toughness of his quarterback. Big crowd today here at Kid Brewer Stadium at Appalachian State University. What a day for football. 14-14. Austin to the 48. Coach Seawalk getting back to what they do best, and that's run the football, feature the fullback, and try to run the option off of Jermaine Austin. Jermaine Austin, the number five rusher in the country. Coach Seawalk realizes that he's a little bit limited on how he wants to throw the football, so he's got to pick and choose his shots. 100. 87 rushing yards in the first half of the Eagles, and here goes Austin, a hunter rather, and he gets it over the 30, down to the 25, to the 24-yard line. Daniel Trailer made the tackle, but not before a big gainer by the quarterback. Such a difficult offense to defend. you got to stop Austin. He's their feature guy. So now you're going to a little counter option play. Good block outside by the big fella. That was Matt Chad Mott got a big block and Hunter just his athleticism gets him down the field. You see the numbers that he's racked up over the last three weeks. He's doing it again today. 26 yard gain. Andrews to the 17. Sam Smalls the first man to get to him. Now this is strength against strength. Georgia Southern's front group blocking coming off the football and that front seven for Appalachian State's defense has done such a good job. Number two in the SOCON against the run. They're getting pushed around a little bit now by Georgia Southern's offensive line. 217 rushing yards for the Eagles on the toss. A penalty flag comes flying right at the end of the play. Smalls perhaps a late hit. Kevin Davis was the ball carrier. It's on them. Now it's going to go against the Eagles. Illegal block on the outside. A lot of times when you run the option or run pitch plays, your receivers are expected to block and they get caught. Illegal block in the back against the offense. 10 yard penalty from the end of the run. Repeat, second down. It's a wide toss play. Davis is your back. No, 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 no. Outside receiver gets the block in the back on Lyles. And that's where your flag came. It was a late flag. And Lyles got blocked in the back. Receivers fighting out there. They got to stay on their block so long when it's a long developing play like that. Sometimes they get behind the defender and get flagged for it. Second and seven. Austin. This will not be brought down. Well, Appalachian's defensive line does a lot of stemming, and by that I mean they move back and forth on the defensive line. You see Leon Moore is out of position. He's not sure where to line up. And they ran right in that hole. Terrell Carter was able to get a hand on him and kind of and keep him close to being short of the first down. Well, you see the measurement. Halftime coming up. We'll be taking a look at the Titans and Panthers, their big NFL matchup tomorrow. Dr. Harvey Durham will be joining us here. We'll have halftime stats and highlights all coming up. Probably the game again in the NFL on Sunday is that Titans Panthers game. You might need to see that breakdown. Broncos play the Vikings tomorrow. That's a good matchup, but that Titan Panthers game is, is the premier matchup for tomorrow. Who'd have thunk it when the season <laughs> That's began? That's exactly right. Third down and inches. And look at that offensive line. Just the surge. They only needed, of course, inches and got 
Oh, a yard, maybe two. But they were just able to get underneath that Appalachian line and just drive them back. Great strength. Look at these. Look guys. at the size of that man right there. Those two guys, you get behind those two guys, you can make a lot of. That's Highway 73 and Highway 66. You get on that and you go a long way. Yes. Davis, the motion man. And this time, Jermaine is stacked up. Leon Moore, he made that play. You know, Georgia Southern will burn a timeout now because uh, you're inside a minute. But this defensive front has to rise up. And this time, Leon Moore gets great penetration. He, uh, KT Stovall kind of seals it off on the front side, but Leon Moore makes the play there. We talked about how active this defensive line is coming into this game. The front four had 31 tackles for loss for over 100 yards. But the team has 51 tackles for loss, so they make a lot of plays in the opposition's backfield. Let's take a look at this Georgia Southern running game because in the last 18 plays, they put it on the ground 17 times, and they're getting great results. This is Kevin Anderson that started the game. That was the first play from scrimmage. Jermaine Austin had a 32-yard gain in the first half. Well, it makes them tough is when you get a lot of people involved. There's Kevin Davis ran in on the touchdown on the on the option play. We've also seen Andrews get in there and make plays. Trey Hunter's made ball made plays running the football. Coach Seawalk's got all of his components working right now. Second and 12. Hunter looking for running room and finds it. Inside the five, down to the three, close to the first down. Corey Lynch the tackle. Must be just shy. The, the official did not stop. Now they will stop the clock and, and measure. But when you're a running football team, you're not used to going no huddle. So this becomes a little bit of an issue. Georgia Southern will burn a timeout now. They don't, they're not used to going into a two-minute operation. You know, you see teams that throw the football. They're used to lining up, calling the plays, line of scrimmage. If you're a running team, that's not something you normally do. You don't normally call a lot of running plays at the line of scrimmage in a no-huddle operation. So they've chosen to burn the time out here and get themselves in the right play here on third and one. That's something that can work against you if you're down late in the game, as we saw Georgia Southern at Wofford. Yeah, it really does. You don't throw the ball with, throw the football with a lot of success. They run the football, and that's what they want to do. They're very good at it. They're one of the best in the country at it. But when they struggle to run the football, which they have not done today, or if you're in a close football game like you were talking about, and you need to move the football in big chunks, they seem to struggle a little bit throwing the football out of spread packages and go into a no-huddle operation, which they're not really used to doing. Third and one. Georgia Southern has 117 yards rushing this quarter. Not too shabby. Yet the score is 14-14. Yeah. Appalachian State's defense has been bending, but they really haven't broken. Third and a yard. On the Mountaineer three as Hunter gets him up to the line. Trey takes it to the one first down and goal. Trey Hunter on the carry. At, uh, both teams with one timeout remaining. Now here we, here's where it becomes a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe called two plays in the huddle now. The quarterback sneak and then had another play that he already has called in the huddle, so there's no reason to call a play at the line of scrimmage. Hunter stacked up. He's not going to get in. It'll be second and goal. Hunter kept trying to make that extra surge, and each time Appalachian was there to beat him. So the Eagles used their final timeout. So now you lose your last timeout. You're out of timeouts. Now Coach Seawalk is presented with a situation. Do I run the ball with a run pass option or do I just run the football again in the middle? Because if he stopped short of a touchdown, there's a chance before the ball can get spotted. You're talking about guys piled up in the pile if it's an inside running play that they may not be able to get another playoff with 20 seconds left. Get everybody lined up, get a play called. Now they'll probably try to call two plays in the huddle and should they not be able to get in. But if you caught and you're not able to get in, there's a chance it's the clock runs out here. This well, you can tell the way when you're around Coach Seawalk, he just he has too much fun, man. <laughs> He's always smiling and slapping guys around and 
he just enjoys being out there and I think it, it goes it, it goes right out into his players. It permeates into his players and, and uh, they play with that looseness that he presents himself with too. 20 seconds remaining in the hand. Hunter straight ahead. Is he in? No signal. And that clock just keeps draining. Now an official's timeout. Well, I think they're trying to dig him out. They can't see where he is. The officials cannot find him. Once they find him, they'll find that he is over the goal line. They're going to signal us a touchdown. Touchdown. But you can see where had he been held short. Yep. They may not have not gotten right. another playoff. So credit Hunter for getting in because that situation you may not get another playoff. The touchdown comes with 11.6 left in the second quarter. And the PAT from Sean Holland coming up. Holland interesting does the place kicking and the punting. Very difficult duty. To, to be the punter and the kicker. Two completely different moves at the football. But he's done a pretty good job with it for Georgia Southern. Out of the tray, Hunter hold, and the kick is good. 11.6. Left before halftime, Georgia Southern back in front, 21-14. Well, Hunter's just going to get in behind the road graders, and that's those <laughs> big, big fellas up front. And you can see he was so, he's underneath you know, 15 players there. They took a long time to dig him out. But the Georgia Southern offensive line got underneath the Appalachian State's defensive line and were able to move him back enough to get the quarterback in the end zone. Again, a drive that uh, exclusively is on the ground. Hunter now with 14 carries and 83 yards, two touchdowns. A scoring drive of 13 plays and 66 yards. All rushing, and now Georgia Southern has outrushed Appalachian State 252 to 79 in this first half. It's an incredible number, and still only be down seven points as Appalachian State is right now. And they've got a chance here, as you know. Derek Black is one of the premier return men in one double A football. Jonathan Dudley's going to kick it away to him, and Black is always a threat to break one. Black gets a running start at the 18-20. Oh, he's got something to the outside. Didn't quite see it. Coming back to his left, there was an opening. Looked like he had a little crease in there. Appalachian, let's see what they decide here with 6.1. If they uh, want to make a Hail Mary here or take a knee, and we'll see what Jerry Moore's thinking with 6.1 left. Now, penalty marker. Yeah, illegal substitution maybe on uh, Georgia Southern. That's exactly what it is. Prior to the snap, illegal substitution. 12 men in the formation against the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. Well, now Richie only has to throw it about 70 yards. <laughs> First half is history. A little pushing and shoving here at the end of the half. Well, we thought it was going to be a dynamite game, and we have not been disappointed. We have reached halftime at Kid Brewer Stadium on the campus of Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina. These two teams fighting for their lives in the Southern Conference race. Three times Georgia Southern has taken the lead. Twice Appalachian has come back to even it. 21 14 at the break on Fox Sports Net. College football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. Kid Brewer Stadium on the campus of Appalachian State University. What a day for the beauty of the mountains as the leaves are changing the beauty is breathtaking and we've had a football game that came Dave Archer as advertised two really good clubs 
just knocking each other back in a one touchdown difference. And really fighting for their lives to try to win and stay in the, in the Southern Conference race to win the championship, and they're playing like that. Let's take a look at our first half recap, and it begins with Georgia Southern scoring not on this play, but on their first drive. Teddy Kraft got it to the one before Trey Hunter took it in. It was 7-0 in favor of the Eagles. But Appalachian, as they did throughout that first half, came right back, stuck it on the ground. The freshman, Allen Atwater, had a big 16-yard gain, and then Richie Williams, the quarterback, took it in from two yards away, and that tied the game at seven. But the running game really served Georgia Southern well, and Jermaine Austin had a big game. Well, Jermaine Austin is a, is a key to this team, the leading rusher in the Southern Conference, and he ripped off a couple of big runs in this game. And then we got the pitch to Kevin Davis, and Kevin goes in from nine yards out, and Georgia Southern's back on top. It was 14 to seven at that point. Then Williams went to the air. Stewart Adams. Beep, 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 yeah, we backed back in there. <laughs> and, and what Georgia and then Georgia Southern finishes the scoring at the end of the first half with the one yard plunge there by Trey Hunter to put Georgia Southern up 21 14 at the half. But what you got was you, you got Georgia Southern running the football, which is what they wanted to do. And then you got uh, the mix between uh, pass and run for Appalachian State. Our food line first half statistics, a whopping 252 rushing yards. Well, you look at the time of possession at the bottom. There's only 10 seconds difference, which means ASU's taking care of the football, and they're moving the ball some, enough to stay in this football game. Usually when you give up 252 yards in the first half rushing, you're down 35 to nothing. Credit their offense to doing enough to keep them in this football game. And it will be Appalachian ball to start the third quarter. They won the toss at the beginning of the game, deferred. They will now get the football to start the second half. Well, we talked about the race and how the top six clubs were going head to head today. Wofford won big at Western Carolina. A very impressive afternoon for the Terriers, 38 to 6. And down in Charleston, South Carolina, the Citadel playing some really good football of late. 10 nothing leaders over Furman at the half. Well, I'm, I'm really impressed with Coach Ayers' group, uh, the Wofford Terriers. They've been tremendous. We got a chance to see them play this Georgia Southern football team and really limited what Georgia Southern was able to do in that football game. Went on to win for the second time in two consecutive years against Georgia Southern. A team with two losses has not won the Southern Conference outright in over 25 years. And so the point you made, Dave, is such a great one about how these clubs are fighting for their lives. They really are, and, and Appalachian State gets the first chance at the football here in the second half. Derek Black is the deep man. And for Georgia Southern, Jonathan Dudley set to kick it away. Here we go, the third quarter underway. The lights are on. Field completely in shadows, and Black elects to run it out of the end zone. Down to the 15. And a penalty flag. Jerry Black on the return. Well, maybe not a good decision for Coach Jerry Moore there. Uh, Black decides to bring the ball out of the end zone five yards deep. Had to turn to catch the football, and then you're going to get a penalty on top of that. And so now Appalachian State's offense now will back, be back way up inside their 10-yard line. Dave, we made the point in the first half about defending the Georgia Southern option and not getting frustrated and not trying to do more than you can. Can we apply that also on that kickoff return? Black's trying to make a big play when he really didn't need to. Well, you'd like to think that Black, with his ability to do the things he does at the receiver or at that return position, would understand it's a seven-point game. We're talking about a one-possession game here. Let me give my offense a little bit of room out to my 20 and down the football here. So I think, yes, it can affect you to a certain extent. He's been on defense. He's been watching them run at him, run at him all day long. He says, hey, I'm going to change this thing around and make a play. He made a bad play there. After the penalty, it is first down to 10 at the Appalachian 8-yard line. Play clock draining. As Williams runs the option to the outside and gets smothered by middle linebacker Derek Butler. Well, Derek's had a heck of a football game. He, again, I talked about him being a sideline to sideline type linebacker. And that's the way he plays. He, when you play the linebacker spot, you try to keep the, the offensive lineman off your legs. He's in the middle, number 43. You see a lineman comes out to try to get a block on him. He plays off the block and then just comes down the line. His job is to take the quarterback on the option play, and he, does, he gets it done right there. Loss of a yard, second and 11. Allen Atwater. 
Good job of keeping those legs moving after first contact. Crawls out to the 13. Boy, it really was. Atwater continues to push. There's Butler. Butler going to scrape and try to make the play in the in the hole. He's got hold of Atwater. That's a leg drive by Atwater. He falls forward. And now you're now you're in a third and five, third and four situation. So all the offense comes into play now for Appalachian State. Williams and Butler's got him by the shoulder and the tackle made at the 14 yard line. Well when you talk about assignment line, assignment football on defense Butler's got to get to the quarterback. Burchett's got the pitch man. Burchett did a great job outside taking away the pitch man so Richie Williams had to carry the football and you see the strength of Butler as he reaches in with one arm and pulls the run it pulls the quarterback to the ground. Three and out. As the punt by McKinney settles into the hands at the 35 yard line up to the 40 of Charity Craft and Georgia Southern with outstanding field position first and 10 at their own 41 yard line a 50 yard punt four yard return. Jerry Moore the Dean of Southern Conference coaches more wins than anyone in the history of this league and we talked earlier with the passing of Choo Choo Justice how this Southern Conference has such a rich heritage and tradition. Look at some of those names some of the greats in the history of football Frank Howard uh, Wallace Wade the man they named the stadium after at Duke Bird Stadium at Maryland was named for H.C. Bird. I mean these are some of the greats. Career, yeah. yeah Dick got the Furman program moving. And Austin is stacked up. No gain on this one now there's a rare time for the Appalachian defense they stopped them on first down that was the key to stopping this uh, we talked about it earlier was the key to stopping this Georgia Southern offense was to limit them on first down not a good passing attack they feature the run they've been averaging this season 7.1 yards on first down they don't do it here that was Jarrell Carter came in and made a nice play for a one yard game Hunter wants to throw chased out of the pocket and he is dropped at the 39. 95 is Omar Byram, the redshirt freshman from Winston-Salem. Well, this is where Appalachia State would love to force you into throwing the football because now you turn turn loose Byram, you turn loose Moore, you turn loose KT Stovall. Stovall's 93 on the edge. He realizes he has contained. He stays out wide and allows Byram to come up, come in and clean up the mess. Third and 12. Hunter cuts it back, finds a hole, but short of the first down as it gets to the 48 yard line. Corey Lynch, the free safety. Well, if you put Georgia Southern in a third and long situation, and that's 10 plus, they only convert 11% of the time. They've only converted three times all season in that situation. KT Stovall forced that play, and then it was finished up by the secondary. So we're ready as Devon Folks goes back to receive the punt of Sean Holland at the 10 yard line is folks here is the kick folks coming up he's going to let it bounce and it gets an Appalachian bounce out to the 22 so the Mountaineers gain oh about 14 yards in field position as they start their second drive of the third quarter when we come back College football recruiting fans, be sure to check out Countdown to Signing Day Wednesdays at 6.30 Eastern. It's the year of the linebacker in the South, and this week we'll take a look at one of the best, West Monroe, Louisiana's Luke Sanders. Plus the latest on commitments, recruiting visits, and more. It's Countdown to Signing Day Wednesdays at 6.30 Eastern on Fox Sports Net. Boy, Derek Butler, you talked about uh, the day that, that he's having. He made every tackle in that last series. Well, he just continues to, to not be blocked. He, 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 and when you're a linebacker, a middle linebacker, and you will not be blocked, you're going to make a lot of plays. He just has a tremendous attitude towards get, I got to get the football. He's a ball hawk, and you see he is all over Richie Williams in the last series of downs. But now it's a new series, and Appalachian has it first and 10 
at their own 22 yard line. Williams on the give to Atwater. You really like the way this kid has that vision, the way he slides on that line? Yeah, he just kind of he just kind of leans and slides. He doesn't have great speed. He's a fresh a freshman, and he just kind of leans and slides and finds the hole. Uh, Butler's going to end. It gets a good lick on the inside from Adams. He ends up getting run over and made them make an attack on an eight yard play by Atwater. But Atwater just kind of leans and finds the hole. He's real patient. I think he's going to be a heck of a bat for his careers over here at Appalachian State. An eight yard pickup on first down second and two. To the outside. Atwater nice cut. Over the 35 to the 36, first down Appalachian. James Young, the tackle. I don't know, the running style is just a kind of an easy running style, the way Atwater runs the football. The play is a little off tackle, handoff. And you see a good block on the edge from Jones, the fullback, and then Atwater does a good job of following him, and there you got a first down. Atwater, 51 yards and 11 carries. I think they're going to have to get Richie Williams involved throwing the football, though, if they're going to continue to move this steadily. I don't know that Atwater can carry the load against this active dude, Georgia Southern front seven. And he cannot this time. Modest gain to the 40. Victor Cabral, the first Georgia Southern defender there. They've done a good job of mixing plays up, Bob, throughout the game. We saw the, the touchdown pass to, to Adams earlier in the game. Uh, those are the kind of things they're going to need to do. Uh, can continue to let Richie Williams stay involved throwing the football. Is Solomon okay? No, they're going to check on him. He has a bad left knee, was questionable for today's game. Well, Deshaun Jude, who was playing that position earlier, had already left the game with a foot. And uh, Solomon had come in and taken his spot, so a little thin at that defensive end spot. Solomon, a 6'2", 240-pound freshman, very active player, very, very athletic on the defensive end position. I don't know how you did it, Dave. But that's something you avoided your entire career as a knee injury. Yeah, I, I don't either. And I had some shots on my knee. It's just, it's just lucky, and that's all there is to it. It's not any about preparation or being uh, more muscular and whatever. It just, it's just plain luck. That's all it is. Robert Locke coming in to take the defensive end spot, vacated by Solomon. Locke, the senior from Savannah. Second down. Williams to the outside leaps. And takes it out to the 43. Did you like the spacing on that? With yeah, his was, tailback? Well, it was good. And, and what Richie decided that time, Richie Williams decided, is he said, hey, I got to, by the numbers, I got to run the football. He didn't try to pitch it to his back. Georgia Southern's doing a good job of stringing it out. And by that, I mean they got, they got players all the way to the sideline. They're able to string play. So Richie's finding the crease and hitting it up in there. He did a good job there. But again, Derek Butler with another tackle. Penalty looks to go against uh, Georgia Southern here. Eagles are backing up. This is a big one, too. And now you see head coach Mike Seawalk getting the explanation. And you'll hear it, too. Our referee in this one today is. After the play. Unsportsmanlike conduct against the defense. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Mr. Ed Rhodes with the call. So, we're at the 43 yard line, first and 10 for Appalachian. <laughs> 8 15 counting, third quarter, 21 14. Georgia Southern on top. Williams swings it to the near side at water. Boy, the white shirts got there quickly, didn't they? Led by Terrence McBride, Matt Rio, number 96. Well, this is on your quarterback. Richie's got to make a better throw in this situation. You've got to bag, and this is a tough throw. This is one of the toughest throws you'll make as a quarterback. 
is the back swinging out of the backfield. He's actually running straight away from you, but you've got to lead him to his upfield shoulder. That time the ball was thrown to his back shoulder, which made Atwater spin completely around, lost his momentum, and at that point, Georgia Southern's athletes were able to rally and make the play for a four-yard loss. Second and 14. Play clock at two, one. They beat the clock, but they can't beat Georgia Southern on this play. Matt Rio there to stuff it up. Third and long. College football Saturday, Fox Sports Net. Number 10 and 1 AA, Georgia Southern. Seven point leaders over Appalachian State. Bob Rath, but Dave Archer with you. Mountaineers on their second possession of this third quarter. Third and 15. Appalachian goes now to their five defensive back set, three down linemen, anticipating pass. Williams back, throwing, and it is complete. Leach makes the grab. Barr, the defender. The spot at the 40, at the 36-yard line. Well, Leach is isolated on the corner. It's a man coverage. He turns his defender to the outside, but he's supposed to be up the field. You see Haywood is inside. Sterling Haywood was supposed to be running the in route there, and Leach was supposed to be over the top on the post clearing for him. Appalachian. He and Haywood had a little discussion after the play. A timeout with 6.52 remaining. Third quarter in Boone, 21-14. Honey. Fantasy football players, listen up. Now there's a show just for you, 30 minutes of who to start, who to sit, and who you need to pick up. The ultimate fantasy football show tonight at 11.30 p.m. and tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Eastern, only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings for start times in your area. What a beautiful backdrop for a college football game. The Blue Ridge in North Carolina. We're in Boone, where it's 21-14, Georgia Southern. Well, this is a great setting for a stadium. It's just nestled down in a little bowl here with the, the mountains all around. There's, there's Howard's knob off on the left there, and uh, it just nestled down in here, and you get the, get the feel that the stadium is even bigger than it really is. The sound just reverberates in here. McKinney was out to punt. They called timeout. Now Appalachian goes for it. Williams on the option, runs it. Trying to get to the stick, and he's got the first down. He's such a threat running the football. Pretty good play call for Appalachian. Uh, you, you talk about strength here now, Bob. This is uh, Richie Williams' strength because he's tackled by Burchett and Mooring are both there. And he makes the, he just, the, the contact is actually about a yard short of the first down, and he drives for the first down. But you see a lot of effort on both sides of the ball. These two teams want this game desperately. And water. Just a routine five yard pickup. <laughs> You're going to run the football. That's what you want. And the big fellows up front now for Georgia Southern creating some room for their talented freshman, Allen Atwater. Under six to play in the third. He's the number four rusher in the Southern Conference, so he's been a guy that's been a factor all year long for this Appalachian State offense. Atwater has 55 yards, Williams 48. Williams on the play action. Pressure from the corner. Williams is going to run. He's got some green grass in front of him. Out of bounds at the 15-yard line. First down, Mountaineers. Classic case here, Bob. If you've got man coverage down the field, there's nobody slotted for your back or for your quarterback. You see Carter, Carter's going to run, or Butler's going to run with the fullback. That's man coverage now. There's nobody left for the quarterback. You see Williams pointing at folks, give me a block. But now they're inside the 15-yard line, and App State's threatening to tie this football game. First and 10 for the Mountaineers. Give Williams 13 yards and 63 for the day.
And water. And water. Touchdown. Boy, that was an impressive drive by Appalachian State, helped by a 15-yard penalty by around the midfield part. But their players stepped up. Atwater stepped up. Richie Williams stepped up. And their offensive line helped them get the football into the end zone. Rockhold bids to tie it. One shoe on and one shoe off. And Eric Rockhold knocks it through. 5-28, third quarter, tied for the third time. Now at 21. Allen Atwater, the freshman from Middlesex, North Carolina, making a name for himself in the Southern Conference. Number 10, number 10, Georgian Southern is tied up by Appalachian State. 21-21 here in the third quarter, and Allen Atwater, the freshman, gets in for Appalachian State. It's an I formation, ISO play, big block from the fullback. And then he, then Atwater makes McBride miss. That's good running by the freshman to get it in the end zone. You'll watch it the, in the middle of this run. I'll show you right where, right, the little shake, right there. He makes that McBride miss for the touchdown. That's just good running. Watch the block by Adams now on Burchett. Boom, right there. Rocked the head back. Atwater got to the outside, made a little shake on McBride and got in the end zone. Three times Georgia Southern's taken a seven point lead. Three times Appalachian has come back to tie it. Eric Rock holds kick. And over Ender coming to Carl Kearney at the six. Kearney up the sideline and out of bounds. Stepped out, they say, at the 27 yard line. And the Eagles will take over at that point. And a penalty flag against the Eagles. Uh, super drive, 11 plays, 78 yards. It's the second team we've seen. Holding. Return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First down. That's the second time we've seen Appalachian State go the length of the field and put the ball in the end zone. Well, we talked about it earlier, Appalachian State's first half difficulties, but look what they do after halftime. Uh, especially the third quarter has been, uh, they've been tough on their opponent in the third quarter. From the 17, Georgia Southern first and 10. Hunter takes it out of the fullback's belly and runs it. Up to the 26. Corey Lynch the tackle. Again, a good solid run by Hunter on first down. Keeps them in a good situation on second down. Keeps their entire offense intact. In the Southern Conference today, number eight, Wofford. Highest ranking ever for a Terrier team. Big win at Western. East Tennessee wins by 10. And Chattanooga has its first win. Austin, first down at the 34. Omar Byron, the left tackle. Credited with the hit. Austin now approaching the 100-yard plateau. He and Hunter right there. Trey has rushed for 97 yards on 17 carries. And Jermaine Austin, 91 yards on 14 attempts. Hunter looked like he wanted to pitch it, but then he got snowed under and a loss on the play. Looked like Leon Moore cut off the play and then Blaylock was able to finish him off. But again, the two defensive ends for this team, K uh, KT Stovall and Leon Moore, they do such a good job of him and in the quarterback and getting penetration, it confuses his decision making. A loss on first down, second and 12. And again, the Appalachian front making life miserable for Trey Hunter. Well, Blaylock's going to get credit with the tackle, but KT Stovall makes this play. KT gets such quick penetration 
that the quarterback can't make a decision. He's the guy we featured in the opening. This guy makes so many, 93, watch him. He gets upfield, there's no place for Hunter to go. So he turns back inside and Blaylock is there. Stovo is so active on the outside. Look at the athleticism to get out there in front of the quarterback. Third down, 13 yards to go for Georgia Southern. Hunter forced to pass to the sideline and it is complete to Kraft. And that's a first down for the Eagles. Well, if you coach Jerry Moore, you kick yourself right here. Because this is you want to force Georgia Southern into throwing the football. Credit Trey Hunter to make for making a really good throw there on a come rack route. But you want this is what you want Georgia Southern doing. This is a great throw. Kraft runs a good route, but you've got two really good corners. Derek Black and Lyles on the other side are two quality corners. You expect them to hold up in that situation. Hunter. Into Appalachian territory at the 49. That's only the fourth time all season Georgia Southern's converted on a third down in 11 plus situation. Second and six. And it speaks volumes for the competitiveness of number 14. I think Trey Hunter just brings an element that I just won't, I'm not going to be denied. And he's played that way the last three games coming in and this game also. Four games in a row. Andrews. Tough running yards to the 40. Lynch and Smalls combine on the tackle. Andrews getting a few touches today. A grand total of 67 yards this season coming in, but he's carried it now four times for 47 yards in this game. And Coach Seawalk's making that defensive front rotate those defensive linemen. They're shuttling them in and out of the game. Good play by Leon Moore. That's Leon Moore playing the quarterback and the pitch there. We talked about these two defensive ends, and you're not going to find any better in this conference than these two guys. Leon Moore looks to see if the fullback's getting the ball. He doesn't see it. He steps outside and cuts Trey Hunter's ability to go outside with the option and then turns and makes a tackle on the quarterback for no gain. That grades out pretty good. And I think uh, his buddy TV, TJ, uh, KT Stovall will, uh, will applaud him for that effort. They are fun to watch. Unless, of course, you're rooting for the Eagles <laughs> of Georgia Southern. Play clock at two. And that's going to be a penalty. Well, you can hear the sideline of Georgia Southern yelling, call timeout. I'm not sure why Teddy Kraft didn't call timeout. He's standing right in front of Coach Seawalk. Part of the snap, delay game, hop in. Five yard penalty, still tuck it down. <laughs> he got a smile on his face all the time. Maybe a 15 yard penalty. <laughs> Telling him, hey, you just got 15 yard penalty. He's got a smile on his face. Guys, guy just has a good time being out there. And his, his players play that way too. Teddy, it's me, <laughs> Coach Seawalk. I wanted a timeout. <laughs> Second down at 15. Swing pass, Davis. He's going to throw it down the sideline to Kraft. And incomplete. And what a play. What a play by Lyles. Well, you talked about it a couple of plays ago, Dave Archer. The wonderful corners that they have at Appalachian, and Lyles may have saved the day on that one. He really did. They get a little swing pass. It ends up being a lateral to Davis. A little swing the lateral to Davis, and then Davis is going to try to find Kraft down the field. But Lyles times it perfectly, comes over the top. These two corners allow Appalachian State to let their safeties get involved with the run. They turn these two corners loose one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. You see Lyles, he timed that up perfectly. He came over the top made the play. He almost intercepted that he ball. Did. Third and 15. Hunter to pass. He's hit, and the ball's knocked loose. And it's picked up by Moore. And we may have seen the big play of the game. K.T. Stovall drills Hunter from behind and knocks the ball loose. Well, we've talked about it all game long. K.T. Stovall is the motor to this defense. When he has an opportunity to rush the passer, 
I'm not sure anybody's going to be able to block him. We saw him do this at the end of the game in Furman last week, create the fumble, and his buddy on the other side, Leon Moore, who's played an outstanding game today, scoops it up and then takes care of the football. Watch her at the end of this run. Moore scoops it up. Now Georgia Southern's going to, Davis is going to try to strip it out. Leon Moore, Leon Moore realizes how important it is to take care of the ball. The big man is having a big game. Williams and Appalachian, and they drop it, and it's a loose ball. The officials are going to have to untangle this one. Is it Georgia Southern? No indication yet, except from the players, of course. The ball belongs to Ooh. Appalachian. Second down. It looked like Richie Williams dove back in to get the football. Atwater comes out late. But great penetration by the Georgia Southern defense. Big hit by Burchett. And then the ball's loose, and now it's just a matter of getting on the bottom and, and who's going to end up. It looks a like Georgia Southern guy's got the ball right now. <laughs> but it, that's what happens on the bottom of the pile. You don't, you don't want to know what goes on the bottom of those piles. <laughs> Penalty flag. Part of the snap, illegal substitution. 12 men broke the huddle, gets the offense. Five yard penalty, still second down. Well, Appalachia came out with a slot on both sides of the field and two running backs. I think they had a probably pretty good opportunity to make a play there. They unfortunately had one more guy than they were supposed to have on the field. That looked like one of those Canadian League formations. <laughs> and that is the end of the third quarter. Wow. Put the remote down. You need all the football you need is right here. We Let's got a dance. 21-21 yep. as we go to the fourth and boom. Fox Sports Net. Fox Sports Net in college football Saturday. 21-21 in Boone, North Carolina. The setting sun. Back behind us, and man, I'm telling you, what a game. Appalachian with the football, second down, and 21 yards to go. And a significant change defensively for Georgia Southern. Derek Butler is out with an ankle injury at middle linebacker. We've been calling his name all day, and he's out. They've retaped the ankle, but he's not back in yet. And Richie wants to throw, and it is incomplete. Sterling Hayward, the intended receiver. There's Butler on the sideline. And it's Jason Earwood who's taken his place. Well, and you already saw the effect of not having Butler in the game. That was a play action fake, and Georgia Southern played zone behind it. But Earwood bit up so much on the run fake that Haywood was open behind the linebackers. Car uh, Butler's done such a good job of seeing play fake and getting back that uh, you already see the effect of having a freshman at middle linebacker right now. Third down and 21 yards to go. Williams out of the gun, has time. Now dancing, gets back to the line and fires, incomplete at the 25. That ball hit the dirt. McBride covering, folks, the intended receiver. Again, a deep zone by Georgia Southern, trying to give up a pass underneath. But what Richie's doing a good job, Richie Williams is doing, is he's buying some time and trying to get the football down the field. Here he decides to go to Devon Folks. Good break on the ball by McBride, and he knocks it down. McKinney's punt. Fair catch at the 14-yard line by Teddy Craft. And Georgia Southern will get it. Now, does that take some of the steam away from Appalachian? They came up with a big turnover but couldn't do anything with it. I think it takes a, it plants a little bit of doubt in your offensive mind because you've got the football at the 40-yard line of your opposition. I don't think it takes anything away from the defense. 
I think these guys just feed on being able to be on the field, and I think you'll continue to see them play at a high level. But offensively, they're going to have to regroup and think about what we need to do to accomplish something and get the ball in the end zone. And with Butler out of the game, could not get the first down. Here's Hunter diving up toward the 20-yard line. Well, mark it at the 21, they say. Knows the ball over the 20. And I don't think we can overemphasize how good McKinney has been today. The punter, again, he pins Georgia Southern deep. Now, Georgia Southern comes out with a, a patented first play and a seven-yard pickup, but McKinney's been stellar today. 50.6 yards per punt on five kicks. Hunter. First down at the 26. Georgia Southern with 18 first downs in the game. Appalachian with 13. Now, Darrell Georgia Carter Southern, made the last tackle. Yeah, they're doing such a good job of probing that defensive middle for Appalachian State. Casey Stovall and Leon Moore have stayed in the game the majority of the time. But Coach Moore is rotating Suter, Byram, Blaylock, and Carr. They're rotating four guys in that middle area because Southern is really coming off the ball in the middle. Inside Austin, nothing there. Whereas in the first half, Appalachian rarely made a first down stand. We've seen it, oh, I'd say four or five times here in the second half. They forced Georgia Southern in a couple of third and long situations. They converted one, and then you had the turnover, and then they, could, they were unable to convert the other one. And so they have forced Southern into some longer yardage situations. Second and seven. And a loss on this play. Byram. We called his name a lot this afternoon, the redshirt freshman. Yeah, that, the, the middle group is fighting hard. They, Byron does a good job of getting in the middle. I think that Connor saw the fullback run clean and said, wait, I may should have handled that football <laughs> off. And he was going to follow him through the hole, and then Byron came off his block and made the play. You know, we get so swept up with what's happening right now, but, boy, you look down the road next year, two years, these are going to be two outstanding football teams. And look how well uh, Appalachian State has adjusted against the run here in the second half. He had up 250 plus in the first half, only 41 here in the second half. A timeout at Boone, 12-41 remaining, tied at 21. Twenty-one twenty-one here in the fourth quarter. Fox NFL doubleheader, Saints Falcons, then Buccaneers try to shut down and perhaps shut up Terrell Owens. <laughs> 49ers trying to get back into the hunt. The NFC coverage begins Sunday at noon Eastern on Fox. The biggest stories are in the NFC, and the NFC is on Fox. I think the latter part of that equation you talked about will never be done. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the mouth that roared. 12.41 left in Boone, tied at 21. Bob Rathman, Dave Archer with you, third and nine, coming up for the Eagles. Hunter. Intercept. Lynch. To the 15. Corey Lynch with his third interception this season. And the second interception today for Appalachian. Corey Lynch will get credit for this interception, but you better give KT Stovall some credit too. Watch the rush from 93 coming on the left side of your screen. Right in the quarterback's face, knocks him to the ground, overthrows Anderson, and now Lynch does what he does best. He really is a ball hawk. Four fumble recoveries, a couple interceptions, his third on the year here, and now he's set up Appalachian State's offense to have a chance to go ahead. First and 10 at the Georgia Southern 15. Well, you're right, Lynch has been a ball magnet this season. Here is Folks. Folks down the sideline. He's in for the touchdown, and for the first time today, the Mountaineers lead. Man, it's a good call by Jerry Moore and his staff. Hadn't seen folks run the football all day. We know they like to get the football in the, the little playmaker's hands. Great punt returner, a kid that's super in the open field. Run the little ISO fake inside, and Folks comes around on the reverse for the touchdown. Eric Rockhold with the kick. 
seven-point lead. Devon Folks, third touchdown of the year, first on the ground. Appalachian down all day. After KT Stovall's great pressure, Corey Lynch with the interception. And on the next play, Appalachian scores. Lynch with a big pickoff, and that set up the TD. Fake inside, and now Folks is going to get on reverse. Watch the fullback block right there by Jones, freeze him down the sideline, and that's what you want. You want Devon Folks in open space. The Atwater fake freezes the inside people. There's the block from Jones, and he gets in the end zone. Folks is the kind of guy that this is what you want. You want him out in space, out on the edge. He's a, one of the leading punt returners in this league. You get him in that situation, he's going to make a lot of good things happen for you. Appalachian has lost four straight and five out of six to Georgia Southern. The question before the house is, can they finish the deal? 28-21 Mountaineers first lead of the game. Kraft in the end zone, runs it out. Sideline and out of bounds at the 20. A final and an upset in Charleston, South Carolina. The wow. Citadel 10 and number 13, Furman 9. And you wonder how much effect the Appalachian State game. We know one effect it had on Furman. Appalachian State went up there and won that game 13-10 last week. We know what the effect was because Bo Moore, the quarterback for Furman, was hurt late in the game on a tackle by KT uh, Stovall. They had to start the freshman. Andrews, the fullback to the 25. Second and five. Up to date, Wofford, the league leaders. Winners today at Western. They're 4-0 in the league. Citadel now 3-1 in the conference. <laughs> amazing. And now you've got the winner of this game. I just think it's amazing how up and down this league. It's amazing and how tight these teams play each other. Again, it's Andrews, and again, good running room straight ahead. Over the 35 to the 38-yard line. I mean, you, when you looked at the up the, the, the play in this conference, the Citadel really didn't come into the equation no. when you thought about it. Now they're sitting one game away from being in the lead. Again, there's no reason for Georgia Southern to get out of what they do. They're going to continue to feature the fullback, let the big road graders come off and create holes, and let Hunter get in behind and make some plays also. On the pitch, Anderson spins his way, keeps his feet to the 41. Kevin Anderson, on the Kevin Anderson, who had a big gainer to start this game of 30 yards, adds 22 on this carry. Here's the third facet of the option. You ride the fullback, quarterback comes down the line, he's taken away by trailer, and now you get the pitch to Anderson. It's the first time we've seen Appalachian break down on taking the pitch away. Hunter, and on his back. In the game, at fullback, we've talked about Andrews. Uh, Brandon Andrews, and we're, we noticed that coming out of the locker room and back to the bench now is Jermaine Austin. Wondering what uh, what problem he may have had, but he's back on the bench now. Well, Andrews has run well in his chance to be in the football game. Here's Jermaine. Well, I'll tell you what, the two defensive ends for this team uh, are all conference performers in the games I've seen him play in. Leon Moore again makes the play there. T KT Stovall cuts it off where, where Hunter has nowhere to go. So when you see KT imploring this home crowd, it's really gotten into this game since the game was tied, and they've become a factor for Appalachian State. Third and five. Nothing doing up the middle. Andrews denied. You know, you talked about Byron, we've talked about Stovall, we've talked about Moore. And you look at the stat sheet, Dave, and it, sh it says Georgia Southern 340 yards rushing, yet we continue to extol the virtues of how well these guys are playing. Well, every yard that Georgia Southern's gotten, they've earned. They've had to pound it, pound it, pound it, and, and Appalachian State's been 
has risen to the task. They have not allowed him to get into the end zone. And ultimately, that's what you, that's the stats you're going to look at. What's on the scoreboard at the end of the game? Amen. Counter, keeper, denied. Appalachian ball with 9.18 to go. Well, Jarrell Carter makes this play in the middle because it's turned back inside by Leon Moore. And that's what those linebackers love about their two outside people. Leon Moore turns it inside, and right there's Carter to clean up. They've stepped up their game in the second half. Appalachian State, I believe they win in halftime and were a little embarrassed defensively. It was the number two rush defense in the, in the conference and they got pushed around the first half. They've come out with a little more resolve. Williams at quarterback. Keeps it and thrown down. Just shy of the 35 yard line by Victor Cabral. Now Williams got tackled pretty awkwardly there, turned the ankle. And he's going to have to come out of the football game. Now they've already called the timeout, so once you call an injury timeout, he's got to come out. Got tacked, got, twist, got twisted a little bit at the end of the run. Williams, number seven, going to turn up inside, fakes the pitch. Now watch, he's kind of turned right there, just rotated on the ankle. And there, there, there is the ultimate difference between natural grass and no, what, no matter what synthetic turf you play on and this is the best you can play on as far as synthetic turf goes but grass the grass will tear loose at that point the synthetic turf is not going to do that and so you get the turn of the ankle and Sal now now Elsner who Joe or uh, Jerry Moore is very excited about having Elsner here as his backup quarterback uh, the trans transfer that came in I guess from what from Florida State or from uh, from Air Force, Air Force. Mm -hmm. comes in from Air Force he's very excited about this kid Watch the turn of the ankle here at the bottom. And see, there's just no ground's going to give way, and the ankle gets turned up underneath. <laughs> Jerry Moore told us yesterday, we haven't had an ankle sprain on this turf all season. <laughs> That'll teach you. 28-21. Today's game was brought to you by your Carolina Ford dealers driving the Carolinas. By bb and you can tell we want your business. By Stedman Hawkins, keeping active people active. And by Food Lion. Food Lion, extra low prices. High drama in the high country, 8.59 remaining, 28-21. Appalachian and the lead, this is Richie Williams, the quarterback, and his right ankle is the uh, the injury how severe obviously we don't know but he's coming out of the game and now you mentioned the left-hander Dave Eric Elsner is going to have to come on in relief you've been in spots like this before what's going through his mind well he's nervous I guarantee you that it's churning your team's up by a touchdown you have a chance to beat uh, the number 10 team in the country so you realize when you come into the game that this is your opportunity to shine but it's also an opportunity to give the football game away too so you're churning a little bit inside because he really hadn't gotten to play much 21 attempts on the season he's completed 11 11 of them and has not rushed the football so he's not been a not been a guy that's been much of a factor because Richie Williams has been such a top player and Richie's limping over to the side I'm a little surprised they're allowing to even walk on the leg before they know what's wrong with it but uh, they've cut the tape off, and, and uh, that doesn't look like he's going to be able to return to the football game. So it's Elsner's game from here on. It's just a matter of him coming in and, and letting people around him make plays. 34 is the guy that comes to mind, Atwater. And it's Atwater on the toss. To the 38. And Dave, it's, maybe it's just me. But here you got a Georgia Southern team that does not pass it all that well. You're seven down. The other guy's got the ball. I've got one eye on that clock, pal. And it's starting to, to get nervous time for the Eagles. Eight and a half. It's third down. I mean, this is a big defensive play right now for the Eagles. That punter for Appalachian. McKinney's such a weapon. Under pressure, 
and dropped. And they get the big stop. Eric Hadley from behind. Well, I don't know if that was, that looked like it might have been a run all the way. Hadley makes a great play from behind. But Elzer looked like he almost wanted to throw the football, and Leach didn't even run a route for him on the sideline. So now they got to give the ball back to this high-powered offense. And it looks like Georgia Southern's coming. McKinney, plenty of time, booms it away. This bounces for the Mountaineers to the 20. Another tremendous punt by Nate McKinney. 42 yards when they needed it desperately. College football recruiting fans, be sure to check out Countdown to Signing Day Wednesdays at 6.30. Coming up this week, they'll check West Monroe, Louisiana's Luke Sanders, one of the finest linebackers in the South. Countdown to Signing Day Wednesdays at 6.30 on Fox Sports Net. Well, here we are, 7.35 to play. Georgia Southern with the football down seven from their own 20, and Hunter goes down. And guess who is there to make the tackle? You guys have been outstanding. The, the two defensive ends for this team are just the strength of their defense, let's face it. They're the two guys that really make it go. And that's exactly what Appalachian needed, a stop on first down. What's amazing is Stovall plays off the block of the fullback and the tackle here. <laughs> There's the fullback trying to cut his legs, and he still makes the play. Second and long. Hunter wants to throw. He's chased, and he's down at the 22. It was his partner, Leon Moore. Leon Moore makes another play on the quarterback. Paul Collins is injured. Boy, and that offense in front for Georgia Southern has played a good football game today. He can't afford to lose the big fellas up front. Travis Hames comes in to take his spot at right tackle. Third down and eight. On third downs today, Georgia Southern is five of 11. Hunter to pass. Hunter under pressure. Hunter can't get away in a sack at the 15. That would be a KT Stovall. Yeah, credit Blaylock too. Blaylock makes a play, and and Stovall, he's just his motor. It runs 90 miles an hour all the time. Plays through the block of Haynes. Quarterback scrambles back into him. Credit Blaylock. Blaylock got a good inside push that pushed the quarterback towards Stovall. Stovall gets the credit for the sack. Five fifty-five to play. The punt is a short one. It is going to bounce over the 50, and Georgia Southern acting as if Appalachian had touched the ball, and it was a live ball, but that's not the case. Appalachian will have it first and 10 at their own 47-yard line, a 38-yard punt by Sean Holland. Well, it came extremely close to touching Lyles, but he got out of the way. Well, the Mountaineers Richie Williams is in the middle of the pile down here in this offensive group, imploring them to put their put the thing together and let's win this football game. And what Elsner? Stovall may be defensive player of the week again this week. Nationally. <laughs> well, look who's back in. Richie Williams. Add water to the 50. And what Appalachian has to do now is move those chains. Yeah, and now the clock becomes, becomes an ally of Appalachian State. And now you'll see Richie Williams, who's played the majority of the snaps for this football team, begin to work the clock. I'll be surprised if you see the play clock snap before three or two on the clock. Continue to milk it. If they get a first down here, then you're going to have to start seeing Georgia Southern start to burn some of their timeouts. They have two remaining. Second and seven. Adwater cannot bounce to the outside as Hadley jumped on his back. You know, we've given a lot of press and a lot of talk towards more Leon Moore, uh, Leon Moore and, and KT Stovall, but Hadley has had a spectacular game for Georgia Southern as well. He's been in the backfield 
virtually the entire afternoon for the Georgia Southern defense, and he makes a huge play now and puts uh, a wounded Richie Williams in a third and long situation. You wonder if he has, the, he's not gonna have the ability to scramble away now, so almost a sitting duck in a passing situation. You may see him run the football, punt it, and just play some defense here. Third and 10. Butler back in the game at middle linebacker, and here they come, and Williams is down. And it's Eric Hadley again off the edge. Hadley has had as big a game for Georgia Southern as Moran Stovall has had on the other side for Appalachian State. He has been all over the place when it comes to defense in the backfield for Appalachian State. A whopping 13 tackles for Hadley. Hadley going to come off the edge and just, they can't block him. And he makes a big lick, and credit Richie Williams for holding on the football, because those are those situations where the ball's jarred loose. Hadley with a super play, two plays back to back. They're second. Please. Now Georgia Southern takes a timeout. Four minutes, 18 seconds. They'll reset the game clock to 418. Well, I'll tell you what you see here is the reason Georgia Southern burns a timeout is they've got to save as much time as they can. If you're a team that can throw the football, you save your timeout for your offense. But you don't want them to run 30 seconds off here because you know you're going to have to kind of feature the run in your comeback. And so they're trying to save as much time as possible. They'll stop the clock with first downs. The Citadel beat Furman 10-9 earlier today. Furman bumped the snap on an extra point. Oh, no. And lost by a point, 10 to 9. Appalachian, and you recall uh, at Furman last week, Appalachian had a chance to, at the end of the game, put a little drive together, eat some time, and they held the ball for 32 seconds before punting it away to Furman. Paladins took it, moved down the field, did not score, settled for a field goal, and lost 13-10. Almost the same kind of situation here. As Appalachian gets the ball back, they don't burn a lot of clock, about a minute and a half. It's down to 418, but McKinney's forced to punt it. Well, here's where your weapon of McKinney comes into play. He's been strong all day long. Let's see if he answers the call one more time for Appalachian State. We'll check the hang time, too. This one hits and is marked out at the 22-yard line. 40-yard punt. Well, Georgia Southern, this is your season. They've won the Southern Conference six years in a row. If it's going to be seven, they have got to score on this drive because two losses with Wofford winning today and having already lost to Wofford this season, this is it for the Eagles. And they'll have to mix more pass into their, into their operation than they would like to. Hunter swings it outside to Anderson. And Lynch comes up to make the tackle. Lynch and Trailer make the tackle and keep Anderson inbound short of a first down. So the clock now begins to work against Georgia Southern. But if you're going to throw the football from a Georgia Southern standpoint, Trey Hunter is the guy you want in the game. Chaz, is, Chaz Williams has struggled throwing the football, football. Trey Hunter has thrown the ball well. Cranking, throwing, incomplete. Lynch nearly had another pick. Third down. Georgia Southern has dominated, and we mean dominated, the Southern Conference. Six consecutive league titles. Six consecutive 1AA playoff trips. And we're in the middle of October, and this is going to be the third loss for Georgia Southern. That might be in jeopardy. Well, they still got 3.30 left on the clock. Hunter. He's going to throw it down the sideline, and it's intercepted at the 37-yard line. The pick is made by Derek Black. But what, ha what happens when you don't throw the football, you're not comfortable doing it. And Georgia Southern just is not comfortable throwing the ball. If you're watching the middle of the screen, there's going to be a receiver wide open. We may not be able to see it. Anderson's going to come open. Just barely saw him there. He forces the ball up, and it's picked off by Lyles. But because they don't throw the football very much, you just don't do it very efficiently. And Black, Black comes up with the interception. 
but he had a receiver down the middle of the field open and just the repetitions of throwing the football just aren't there. Elsner back in to run it. Using that good Air Force training <laughs> and running it well out to the 45. Clock a big factor now for the Eagles. They have one timeout to burn. 3-10 and counting. Well, Elsner's a big kid. Weighs 220 pounds, 215, 220 pounds. So that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a steady diet at number 34, Atwater, and you're going to get Elsner on the edge running with the football. Be very surprised to see them put the ball in the air. Let's see if the young guy can work the court or work the clock. He Play looks like he, a 10. Yeah, he's watching it. He's working it. Snap at four. Adwater. Loss of a yard for Chet, the first man to get there. Chet and Butler have been so active today for Georgia Southern's defense. Georgia Southern. They use their last time out here. It's the third and final timeout. 227 to play. 28-21 Mountaineers. Our player of the game, KT Stovall. As a presenting sponsor of tonight's telecast, BB&T will donate $500 on behalf of KT to the General Scholarship Fund of the Southern Conference. At the end of the year, the fund will be distributed among the members of the Southern Conference. And I think he can share that one with Leon Moore and Blaylock and Suter and everybody else, but he has been a one-man wrecking crew. We'll call the folks at BB&T. We want 500 for Stovall and 500 more for Moore. That's right. Throw a couple 250s in for those two D tackles. Too. That's right. Boy, what a what a job they did in turning this game around in the second half. As you mentioned, Dave, Georgia Southern was running pretty much at will in that first half. And maybe credit the defensive staff for Appalachian State. They turned up the heat a little bit, changed some things, maybe defensive front-wise. But what thing they didn't change, they didn't change 90 and 93 on the edge. They just kept coming. Elsner at quarterback. Wants to stay inbound and does. Ball came loose, but he was down. That means the clock continues to run. And a smart play by Elsner to stay inbounds. It will be fourth down and a yard. So Georgia Southern's going to have one more, or will they? I'm assuming Appalachian will punt it. Yeah, you got to punt this football. You don't turn it over. You don't go for it here on your own 46-yard line. Well, where is McKinnon? Well, they'll run the clock down as far as they can, maybe even take the five-yard penalty and then put your punt team in. They do have a timeout left, too, a couple timeouts left. They'll burn a timeout right at the end here, probably come up in a second or two. And now they can punt the football and play defense. I'm out. Appalachian State, their second of the half. Later this evening, our college football Saturday will continue. Coming up next, we send you to the Big 12 as wow. number one Oklahoma battles number 24 Missouri. How about that? Maybe your leading Heisman candidate, Jason White, the quarterback from Oklahoma, has thrown nine touchdown passes in the last two weeks. Other Sir? parts of our region in North Carolina, we've got the Carolina Hurricanes getting set to face off against the New York Rangers tonight. That's coming along at the top of the hour. And uh, for those of you watching in Boone, North Carolina, we will stay with this football game and switch you to hockey later. 28-21, Appalachian resurrecting its season. Off to a bumpy start at one and three. Losers at the Citadel. And in Eastern Kentucky in a season opening, 1A defeated Hawaii. And they've got a chance to end a four game losing streak to the Eagles of Georgia Southern. But GSU is gonna have one more crack at it here with a minute and a half to go, McKinney with the punt and he airs it out back to the eight yard line and the return and getting out of bounds at the 12 yard line to steady craft another magnificent punt by mckinney 46 yards 
Well, you might want to get an extra 500 for McKinney, too. So yeah, BB and, BB and T can afford it. <laughs> you know, we're going to just hand out their money all night long. Spectacular kick and tremendous coverage. Now, anybody that thinks this game's over with is, is crazy because there's too many athletes wearing white jerseys out there on the Georgia Southern side and that have been in these situations before. A lot of experience on Georgia Southern side from an, from an athletic standpoint, from a, from a, a skill position standpoint. Georgia Southern has not scored in the second half. They need seven to tie it, and the pass to Kraft is incomplete. Second and 10 with 121 left. You force your quarterback into a three-step drop and throw the ball short because of KT Stovall, because of Blaylock, because of Byram, because of Leon Moore. They rush the passer so well that they can't afford to get their quarterback too deep in the pocket. Hunter. Four for ten with three passes intercepted. Second and ten. Hunter throws. Incomplete. Penalty flag. Stops it with 116 left. I hope they don't call grounding here because I don't agree with this. There is no flag on the play. There was a receiver in the area. Yes, there was. <laughs> yeah, the old quarterback saw that one. Hunter tries to get rid of the football. Blaylock gets a good rush to the inside. 57's Blaylock makes the offensive guard miss. Good rush. He realizes he's got a back right in the middle. There's Kevin, Kevin Davis. Third and 10. 116 to play. Hunter throwing. Too tall and wide for Davis. Fourth and ten. They've got to move the sticks on this one. And the ball game is over. For you wa fans watching in the state of North Carolina, with the exception, of course, of the folks here in Boone, you'll be switched to tonight's NHL game featuring the Carolina Hurricanes. For the rest of you, all over the network, we'll stay here at Appalachian. Minute 10 to play. Hunter on fourth down, cranks and throws. That's complete to Anderson. He's going to be marked at the 20. That's three yards shy. Appalachian ball. Appalachian win. That's a huge win when you ever defend your home field the way Appalachian did today, especially the way Georgia Southern came out. Their first drive, they just stuff it down Appalachian's throat, go 80 yards and score. Appalachian just, you know, stems the tide, continue to play, and play defense is what they did in the second half. So let's look ahead. Well, the first thing you have to look at for Appalachian State is how, what is the health of Richie Williams? Yes. Richie Williams sprains the ankle. How serious is that? Elsner looks like he might be a guy that can handle things, but again, Richie Williams is such a catalyst offensively. Now you look forward to guess who next week. And there, there's your big game. They, the they, league leader. They slayed it. They go here's in front of a huge crowd of nearly 14,000 at Kid Brewer Stadium. All right.